วัสดีค่ะ For some companies, the names of the CEOs of those companies have become synonymous with the companies themselves. When we say Apple, we think of Steve Jobs, or when we say Microsoft, we think of Bill Gates. Should CEOs have a brand? Would it be beneficial for the company? I discussed this issue with a veteran business consultant, Mr. Andrew McBean, who is a partner at Digital Juice Company. Andrew, what does it mean when we say this person or that person is a brand in himself or herself? There's differences I think we have to explore first about uh, a brand for a person who has formed their own company and, and is, has built their brand as they have as the company itself has matured. I mean, there are so many examples of these. You know, Bill Gates with Microsoft, mm -hmm. um, with, uh, with, with Dell, Michael Dell with Dell, Martha Stewart. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many examples. And they're different. Steve Jobs, Apple. Steve Jobs, Apple, yeah. And, and it's funny, when you look at them as well, they very much characterize the brand itself. Steve Jobs, kind of cool, Apple. exactly. Bill Gates is? Is Microsoft. Exactly. You know, and, and Michael Dell is in fact very sort of an operational guy. You get, the, you get the impression that if he was an employee, he'd be sort of in the background somewhere just, you know, punching oh, numbers exactly. and stuff like that. He's, and, and that's what Dell's success was for the largest time. So mm -hmm. it's interesting how it's almost, it's, and that's just one of the challenges, of course, later, is it's quite hard to separate in those cases the company brand with the person brand. And they tend to very much resemble the strengths of the company themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take a local example with uh, Superchai example with, with True mm -hmm. doing you know, many things and thinking about convergence and future and you know, he's a young guy himself, he's, he's a young guy. So it's, they tend to be already very linked into the company and it's hard to separate them out of that, okay. which, which will become challenging later. But there's a second type of CEO brand which are not those that actually were starting the company in the first place. Uh, these are people who come into an existing company, wherever uh -huh. it might be, and they themselves have created a brand. Uh, and that's also very interesting because is the brand the person or is the brand complementary to the company? Mm. Uh, you know, and I would take here, which I'm, you know, I used to work for DTAC and I, I saw a very good example of this with, with Sigway. Uh, Brecker, who was the CEO of, uh, and had his own brand for sure. He had his own brand. He has his own personality. And but it was very complementary, if you think about it, to DTAC strengths. And it was very much seen as a sort of a people's company. Um, mm -hmm. And and that's what Sigway was as well. And his persona and his brand was very much related to that. It was about uh, the fact that he was approachable, and he was. You know, it, it's very it, it's very interesting how these things sort of they can reinforce each other uh, as well. And you take uh, somebody like Kunsupachai. Kunsupachai is, I don't think is charismatic, I hope he doesn't mind me saying, is somebody like Sigway. But he's very functional, very kind of you know, operational, very can, can talk eloquently about convergence and about what's going on in the, in, in the future, which is very much what, what the strengths of True have been about. Uh, you know. so, so it's hard to answer that question, the, the question you answered at the, at the beginning. Um, each one of those CEOs has their own, but it is, as you said, a lot about expressing their own personality. But it's it's structured, you know, and I think that's the important thing. It has to also be aligned with with the company. Mm -hmm. But either way, is a branded CEO beneficial for the company itself? It is, uh, and again, though, it's interesting and quite important to separate those two those two categories we we sort of saw before the people who who started the company, the Martha Stewart's, the Michael Dell's, the Bill Gates, um, who were associated with the beginning of the company. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's very clear how much benefit they add uh, to, the, to the general brand uh, of the company. There's, there was a study done that said that on the NASDAQ stock exchange, 70% of the valuation of the company, any company, is actually to do with intangibles, not tangibles like your order book, your pipeline, but 70%, 70%, which is just huge, a lot, yeah. is about the Apple brand, the, the Google name, the, you know, the, so, and in fact, take Microsoft as an example. Microsoft is the most profitable company in the world, and it's probably, its capitalization is lower than it should be based on fundamentals. Mm -hmm. uh, but these guys who have a bit more kind of pizzazz at the moment, like Google and Apple, they're doing really well. So the intangibles are, are really important, and the CEO brand, is a very key part of those intangibles. So, so that CEO brand adds value into those companies. Uh, the very big, 
problem in those in the example where they started the company is when they decide to leave or when they're not there anymore suddenly especially for bad reasons yeah what would happen well um, I, I can maybe we can take two examples Martha Stewart uh, who who wasn't there anymore due to very bad reasons um, her immediately there's a stock a stock uh, problem immediately and, and that's kind of if I remember it correctly she went to jail she for went some to jail insider for inside stock in, exactly trading right, yeah. inside the training inside the trading and um, the stock exchange the her stock the Martha Stewart stock went down in excess of 20% that day that she was indicted uh, sorry not indicted that she was convicted mm -hmm. um, she did she served her her term she came out Uh, she's now back into celebrity status. Yeah. The stock is doing fine, thank yeah. you. And people didn't stop going to the stores. Her case is kind of very interesting because she, and again, this is very important about how you, how you yourself as a CEO, you brand yourself. Because her brand really was her and it was about her lifestyle. Now that's interesting because that's a little bit more dangerous. If you're a functional CEO and you branded yourself as a functional CEO and suddenly you're caught inside a trading, Maybe there's less of an impact on somebody like that. Uh -huh. But Martha Stewart had said, you know, this is my, my lifestyle, my house. You come into my shop, this is my house. This is my house, this is what looks, welcome to my house, welcome to my life, yeah. become my friend. Oh, hello, my friend is inside a trading. <laughs> so it's, it's um, that was more dangerous, uh, actually. But she came back, she came out of that um, well enough and Martha Stewart came out of it. But it, kind of interesting, it didn't impact long term on the stock. Um, so what, people just tend to forget or maybe forgive her? I think that, that was the most profound, well in fact that probably helped if you think about a kind of personal friendship she'd managed to develop with so many people, um, gave her a certain protection and people were I think ready to sort of say excuse it and say okay well she's one of us, she makes mistakes, mm -hmm. you know, and, and she was sort of welcomed back in mm -hmm. as don't do that again kind of thing, you know, so, and so that in sort of strangely may have really benefited her in her return. It doesn't happen all the time, of course, and it very much depends on what you are charged with. Uh, I mean, there are things which are perhaps more accepted by society as people making mistakes, um, as being human, you know, even though they can be bad. And there are things which are simply not on, not on the cards, you know, and if you do them, that's much more negative. But in that example, It's quite interesting how the personal brand of a CEO, of course, moves away from the company. But it's quite easy to point to that person and say, oh, bad person. Um, and their equity will reduce clearly. Mm -hmm. But the company equity reduces, strangely, not by the same amount. Um, and they're able to distance themselves from that, which is also another benefit. So they, all the years that person was there, they had a positive benefit all the time. But when they leave, um, Yes, there's a, there is a negative benefit and it comes away from the company, uh, but it's not as much as they gave in the first place in terms what of... What if something problems. bad happened, like in the case of Martha Stewart, what would happen to the overall reputation of her company? It, it would be interesting to do an entire case study of the Martha Stewart, Martha Stewart thing, because it may be a bad example, or, or maybe a, a very rare example, because of the way that she branded herself. If you think about it, each, each person you have a brand of, brands themselves differently, and that's interesting. Uh, Bill Gates, obviously, and he's gone through two different brands as far as I can see it. You know, he's been the nerdy brand, which is still very much associated with him, but he's now the philanthropic brand. He's actually, which is interesting, I think he's the only guy I can think of who's actually managed to have two almost completely different uh, brands, both very powerful. But he was sort of nerdy or philanthropic. Uh, Steve Jobs, kind of cool. Um, each person has their own their own thing, but Martha Stewart, as I mentioned before, she she really was about her own lifestyle. About this is kind of this was the family. People who were buying from Martha Stewart, people who went to shops, they were part of her family. It was sort of like going to her living room, going to her kitchen. Um, it was very a deep connection that she was building, which was very positive for 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 that franchise for for so long. Um, but when she was As I said before, when she was in trouble, I think that she got the benefit of that. I think, yeah, okay, she had to go and serve her time, uh, but people were willing to forgive her when she came back out and welcome into the. It was a different relationship suddenly with the consumer. It wasn't now, you know, this is my home. It's, hey, I know it's your home, but you've done some bad things, but it's okay. We're we're gonna we're gonna work together on this. And it sort of changed the relationship uh, that she had. Um, So 
in that respect, because that's very unusual from a branding perspective. Uh, if you took a Bill Gates uh, situation, um, he brands himself differently. He doesn't brand himself on lifestyle, come into my home, let's be friends. Uh, that's definitely not Bill yeah. Gates. However friendly he might be, it's, that's not his brand. And Steve Jobs is the same. In fact, in fact, Steve Jobs, I think you would think, was almost separate, different from that. Uh, he, he would almost, because Apple are very, um, very reluctant to give away any sort of pre-release dates or any information or like that. So Apple have this sort of, that cool image, but at the same time, they also have this kind of mystique, almost. A distance. A a distance. distance. Yeah. A distance. And that, if you think about both Apple and Steve Jobs, it comes with both, actually, if you think about it. It's quite interesting how one brand can reinforce the other. Um, equally though, uh, I, I, I suspect, and this is something that I'm, I was trying to think of an example and I couldn't. Let's say that you have a company that is very, has a reputation as being very, let's say, functional. Uh, they just do things right. They're not very friendly. Uh, you know, they, they maybe not have the greatest strategy, but they just get things done every day and people are just satisfied with that. But they wanted to, they wanted to change their brand or add to that functional brand. They wanted to add a, a customer friendly yeah. thing. Um, it's possible, possible for a company like that to go out and look and say, oh, that CEO has that brand. I want to take this and put it on top of what we have and we will get the whole of those two things. Um, that doesn't work. <laughs> oh, no, that <laughs> it doesn't work. In my, it, from what, that's why I couldn't think of a good example of it, I don't think. Uh, that's an interesting thing. I think one of two things will happen. Uh, the CEO, the CEO is only one person, let's remember. Okay, they, they are supposed to have, you know, they're supposed to be all powerful, omnipotent being, um, but they're not. There's, there's thousands of people inside the organization that represent a huge amount of the DNA of that company. And the CEO, that takes a long time to change, whether you like it or not, even if you're the most active CEO in the world. Uh, it takes years and years to change. But if the personality of that CEO can actually be portrayed in the press, in interviews, in the media, then maybe that's, perception of people might that's change. That's a very good point.